Hello students. Today we are starting a new chapter, shear force and bending moment. You must remember that we have discussed a chapter in phase 1 that is support reactions. Means types of beams, types of loads, etc. Okay. The same chapter is relevant with this chapter, shear force and bending moment. Sometimes what happens? While constructing a structures, a complicated structures, we have to calculate the number of forces acting on the beams, number of forces acting on the columns and due to that forces shearing at point to point on the beam is occurring. So we have to take care of the beam from point to point and we must make sure that the beam cannot fail due to certain amount of loads. Simultaneously due to this shear forces the bending movement are occurring from point to point. So in this chapter we will study the diagrams okay we will study the diagrams of shear forces as well as diagrams of bending movements and analyze that due to this shear force or due to this bending movement the beam can fail or not so we are checking the stability of the beam actually with the help of this chapter so first of all let us uh, discuss some introductory topics then after we will move towards one numerical which will show us the diagrams how the diagrams can be drawn how the loads are acting on the beam and how the things are going let us see the introduction first what is written over here we see that whenever a horizontal beam is loaded with vertical loads sometimes it bends due to the action of the loads okay when the beam is loaded due to vertical loads beam is horizontal loads are vertical so the beam may bend due to this loads the amount with which the beam bends depends upon the amount of type of the loads length of the beam elasticity of the beam and the type of the beam so beam cannot bend drastically it is depending on the beam material it is depending on the beam length it is depending on the types of load it is depending on the modulus of elasticity of the beam material also okay the science, the scientific way of studying the deflection or any other effect is to draw the and analyze the shear force and bending moment diagram of the beam. In general, the beams are classified as under. So, to analyze this failure, we are drawing shear force and bending moment diagrams. How the diagrams are drawn, that we will discuss afterwards. Let us see, first of all, the classification of the beams. Mainly, there are five types of beams. Actually, we have studied six types of beams. But for the diagram purpose, only five types of beams are there. Cantilever beam, simply supported beam, overhanging beam, rigidly fixed or built-in beam and continuous beam. In the case of diagrams, we will discuss only cantilever beam, simply supported beam, overhanging beam. Only three types of beams are there in our syllabus, our GTU syllabus, for which we are drawing the shear force and bending movement diagrams. Let us go ahead and see further. These are the types of loading. There are mainly three types of loading visualized. First one is concentrated or point load. Second one is UDL means uniformly distributed loads. And third one is UVL means uniformly varying load. Must remember that in our GTU syllabus, the diagrams of uniformly varying load is not there. Okay. We have to draw just two diagrams. First one is for concentrated or point loads and second category is for UDL uniformly distributed load. Now coming back on to the title of the chapter what is shear force and what is bending movement. So what is shear force? The shear force briefly written is SF. So now onwards we will discuss it like SF shear force and bending movement means BM bending movement. At the cross section of the beam may be defined as the unbalanced vertical force to the right or left of the section. So what is the shear force? It is the unbalanced vertical force towards the left or right side of the section of the beam at any point. Okay. Now what is bending movement? The bending movement at the cross section of the beam may be defined as the algebraic sum of movements of the forces to the right or left of the section means it is the summation, it is the algebraic summation of plus or minus movements on left or right side of the beam section at any point, at any instant. So this is basically the definition of shear force and bending movement. Now let us discuss ahead. What is shear force and bending movement diagrams basically? 
this is the most important topic the shear force and bending moment can be calculated numerically at any particular section okay so at any particular point you can calculate shear force and bending moment the method of calculation we will discuss right now but sometimes we are interested to know the manner in which these values vary along the length of the beam this can be done by plotting the shear force and the bending moment as ordinate and the position of the cross section as abscissa these diagrams are very useful as they give a clear picture of the distribution of the shear force and bending moment all along the beam now these are the importance of drawing but what is the method here written in the note form while drawing the shear force and bending moment diagrams all the positive values are plotted above the baseline and negative values below it so positive values are above the x axis and negative values are below the x axis what is the x axis what is the drawing let us see ahead first of all you can see the three cases relation between loading shear force and bending moment the following relations between loading shear force and bending moment at a point or between any two sections of the beam are important from the subject point of view now what is the first relation if there is a point load at a section on the beam then the shear force suddenly changes shear force line is vertical but the bending moment remains the same means the, there is a point load at a section then bending moment remains same but shear force is vertical in the second case if there is load between two points there is no load between two points then the shear force does not change but the bending moment changes linearly okay so this is the relation between shear force and bending moment just uh, remember this topic for the exam point of view it nothing relates with the numericals in numericals you have to mug up a simple language a simple topics which i will tell you during the numerical if there is a uniformly distributed load between two points then the shear force changes linearly but the bending moment changes according to the parabolic law so when there will be udl then when there will be udl uniformly distributed load we will draw a parabola during the diagram during the bending moment diagram we will draw a parabolic line okay so must remember this now this is the very first numerical concentrate your method will be clear in this numerical draw shear force and bending moment diagrams for a cantilever beam of the span 1.5 meter carrying point load as shown in the figure you know you can see this is the cantilever beam of 1.5 meter length from a to b there are two loads acting at point c and point b both are point loads at point c the point load is 2 kN at point b the point load is 1.5 kN the distance between point b and c is 0.5 meter so the remaining distance from point a to c is 1 meter now here is the shear force diagram and here is the bending moment diagram so figure b denotes the shear force diagram while the figure c denotes the bending moment diagram now how this diagrams can be drawn let us calculate ahead you can just remember this diagram for your calculation this is the 3.5 meter height this is the 4.25 meter height this is the rectangular diagram 1.5 meter height 2 meter height this is the inclined line 0.75 meter height zero height and this is also another inclined line joining this two all the diagram is in the below means negative direction so minus sign is there in both the diagrams now how this calculation comes let us see in the calculation portion see this is the data what is given span means length of the cantilever beam is 1.5 meter there are two point loads at b which is w1 1.5 kN at c which is w2 it is 2 kN you can see the same figure tiny figure over here at point b the load is 1.5 kN at point c the load is 2 kN distance between them is 0.5 meter now what is shear force diagram how the calculation comes the shear force diagram fb now you can see the f means shear force at point b so look at the figure in the first figure fb will be 1.5 kN means load acting on the point b is 1.5 kN and which is downwards downwards so you must take it as negative sign so here it is minus 1.5 kN so it is minus so drawing will be below the baseline so you can see over here from the x axis downwards 1.5 meter height is drawn like this now going left from b to c there is nothing in between the points 
So from B to C, this line, this line remains constant. Okay. So the, here is how the diagram is forming. Okay. Now come back to the next point, FC. What is FC? So at FC, the earlier force minus 1.5 remains as it is. And another 2 kN downward force is acting means another minus 2. So minus 1.5 and minus 2. So total answer will be minus 3.5 kN. So from this point again go downwards minus 2. So total will be minus 3 over here. Now from coming C to point A. There is nothing in between the points. So from C to A again there will be the constant line. Like this. Okay. Now. Force at F, A, shear force at point A. So nothing is there up to point A. So here the diagram is close. And to close the diagram, draw a vertical line from point A like this. So here is the complete shear force diagram. Okay, I hope it is very clear to you. Then, now, how the bending moment diagrams can be drawn? This length is 3.5 meter, you can see over here. Now coming back to the bending moment diagram at point B. So how the bending moment diagrams can be drawn? While you are calculating the bending moment at point B, you just go right side from point B. So you can see in this figure at point B, at right side of point B, there is nothing. No road right side of point B. So from the right side on the point B, there is no moment. So moment at point B will be zero. So you can see moment at point B will be zero in the diagram. Coming back, coming back onto the point C over here. So now, now you will understand. At point C, what is the right side of point C? You can see the right side of point C is 1.5 kN load at a distance of 0.5 meter, which is going down. So which will give clockwise movement, or you can see which is going down. So the movement is negative. The downward motion is always negative. Okay, now what is the moment? Force into perpendicular distance. The so force is 1.5 kN and distance is 0.5 meter. So answer is 1.5 into 0 0.5, 0 0.75 kN into meter negative moment. So you can see at point C, don't draw the line, vertical line. Just make a dot at the projection of point C. Just make a dot like this, 0 0.75 and join from point B to C via inclined straight line. When the point loads are acting on the beam, the joining of the points will be via straight lines only. When there will be UDL, we will draw the parabola. Okay. Now coming back to the point A. So you can see at point A, what is right side of point A? Right side of point A, actually there are two loads are acting, 2 kN and 1.5 kN. So at point A, 2 kN and 1.5 kN. So taking movement up to point A, we will get 1.5 into distance 1.5 so 1.5 into 1.5 again for point 2 kN load the distance will be 1 meter so 2 into 1 and both the movements are downwards so negative so total answer will be minus 4.25 kN into meter so you can draw at point A at the reasonable scale 4.25 kN into meter just join the points like this and close the diagram Join the point like this and close the diagram. So this is our bending moment diagram which is totally negative. Okay. So this is basically the method to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. Must remember that this is not with the help of scale. Not with the help of dimensions. It is just the logical dimensions. 2 meter means this much. 1.5 meter smaller than that. 3.5 meter bigger than that. So likewise draw the diagrams logically but not with the help of scale. You can just draw the straight lines only. Okay. Must remember the calculation procedure. We will go further in the next lecture with very tough numericals. This chapter will be very very tough. So must practice at your own. Till then. Thank you. Goodbye students.